In this sand engine tutorial, we're going to learn about Box 2D, get our player Fred bouncing off walls and all that crazy stuff, so let's get to it. What's going on guys? Like I said, we are going to be working with Box 2D in this tutorial. Box 2D is going to allow us to add all the physics to our scene, such as gravity, collisions, we're going to be able to define how heavy or the density of Fred, which is our main character. Also, if we want Fred to have friction or how high we want him to bounce off objects, um, all of that stuff is going to be included with Box 2D. So the first thing that we need to do is add the physics world to our scene. And that's what it's actually called is the physics world. And we're just going to call this physics world. And then we're going to define what our physics world is for this scene within our onCreateScene method. So let's go down here and we're going to define what that is. And we're just going to set it up to be a new physics world. And as you can see, it takes two values, of a vector 2 and a Boolean value, which allows it to sleep or not. I'm not going to talk much about the second parameter, but the first parameter is where the gravity is going. And it's going to be a vector 2. And so we're just going to create a new vector 2. And this will be our x and y value. And then for a second parameter, we're just going to set that to be false right now. Um, I'll get into that later, not in this tutorial. But go ahead and add your import for vector 2. And basically what this is saying is there's no gravity right now. There's no gravity pulling our objects in the left direction or the x direction or the vertical direction, which is our y direction. But what we actually want to do is have the gravity be pulling the objects down to the bottom of the screen. And we're going to do that by relating to either a number like 9.81, which is the standard for gravity uh, in meters per second squared, uh, the acceleration of gravity. But there's also a class that handles some of these variables for us. It's called sensor manager. So we're going to relate to the sensor manager and hit dot. And as you can see, we can have different gravities like gravity on the moon, gravity on Earth. Uh, a variety of different things here and we're going to use one of those instead so it's always somewhat consistent instead of just 9.81 it's 9.8066 something 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 whatever the gravity of earth is um, basically what we're doing here is we're defining our x and y values so let's say we had an x definition which would be about five or something like that we could set up a x pole in this direction and a y uh, vector or whatever of 9.81 and then our gravity would pull us off to the right of the screen um, this would be kind of the gravity direction of any objects in our screen it pull it that way okay hopefully that makes sense um, but since we are just defining the x direction we're just having a negative gravity here and we aren't having gravity relate to the horizontal at all so all of our objects will be pulled to the bottom of the screen. This is how it is in real life in the, in the world that we live. So that's kind of the definition of uh, vector 2. You'll see this quite often when we're working with physics, uh, box 2D, all that stuff. So what we've done so far is kind of set up what our physical world will be. Now we have to attach that to our scene. So we're going to relate to our scene. We're going to say this dot scene. And then we're going to say dot register update handler. So basically what the engine does is it calls these update methods over and over and over again so that we get a consistent animation and we move our objects in the x or the y direction according to whatever is happening and we get this update every time. So now we have to register our physical world or physics world to this update handler so it will take into consideration gravity and all of our other physics components that we want to attach to our scene will be registered now once we register our physical or physics world here. So if we run this, we still have the same uh, screen as we did completing the last tutorial. That's because we only have a sprite. We only have like an image painted onto the screen. We don't have a body for this sprite for our player, Fred, um, because once we give Fred a mass or a body, he'll be affected by gravity and it'll be pulled in the downward direction. So that's the next thing that we probably want to do. Again, we're going to do that within our onPopulate scene method down here. We've defined our sprite, what it is, all that stuff. We've attached it to the scene. But before we attach it to the scene, we're actually going to create our body of Fred. So we're going to say body, body equals, and we're going to relate to the physics factory. And we're going to say dot create box body or circle body or a line body, polygon body, triangle. 
depending on what type of body it is, that's how it's going to relate to collisions and working with the physics components. Again, Fred is a circle, so we're going to create a circle body. Click that. So the first parameter, as you can see here, it's looking for a physics world. Uh, we've created that. This is basically saying what realm of physics do we want our character or our body to apply to. And we're going to do the, the physics world that we set up, the gravity and the x or the y direction. The next thing that we have to do is give it the shape of our character. Again, we have kind of created what our sprite's going to be here. Um, and we're going to relate to that. So we're going to relate to the S player or our sprite. And then the next thing that we have to do is relate to the body type. And we'll get into body types later. There's three choices, dynamic, kinetic, or uh, chromatic body type, and static body type. Uh, we'll get into these three later, but static body kind of just stays still. Um, even if there's gravity, it won't relate to gravity at all. Kinematic bodies will relate to some of the physics, uh, but some of the forces applied on each body type will not be um, taken into consideration when there's collisions and stuff like that. As for now, we want all collisions, all forces uh, to be applied to the body. We're going to choose dynamic body type. And again, I'll get into these other ones as well once we start using them. Um, I just don't want to go too in-depth in this tutorial without us needing to. And lastly, we have to define what type of fixture def we want. And we're going to create a new fixture definition here. I'm going to call this uh, player fix and maybe this will be a final and this is going to come from the physics factory um, and we're going to say create fixture definition density is going to be like how heavy Fred is essentially it's going to be his mass per volume and our elasticity will be like hey do we want Fred to bounce off a collision and go well in our example do we want him to bounce off the ground and go back up to the same height or do you want him to go a little bit less than his original height or do we want, want him to go higher? And then also our uh, friction here is, do we want friction to be relevant uh, with Fred? So for density, we're gonna give him 10.0F. These all have to be float values. For elasticity, we're gonna say 1.0F, and that should roughly be about the same height. Sometimes we get some problems when working with and engine, it won't be exactly the same height. Over time, it'll get higher. Uh, we'll, we'll work with that later, but uh, friction, we don't want friction to be applied to Fred. Um, so now we've set up our player fixture and we're going to relate to that as our fourth parameter here. And now we have set up Fred's body type. You can hit Control Shift O to add your imports. Uh, the next thing that we have to do is add some additional parameters for collisions and also interacting with physics for Fred. And we're going to do that after we attach him to the scene here, after we've attached our player. And we're going to relate to our physics world again. And we're going to say dot register physics connector. And we're going to relate to a new physics connector because we haven't defined one yet. So we have a few different options to choose from with our physics connector. We're going to be use the, using the one that shows the area uh, of our body that we want to affect. Also the body itself and whether we want to update the position and rotation. So go ahead and select that one. Uh, for the area, we want to relate to our actual player or our sprite. And then we want to relate to the body of that sprite that we set up, uh, which will be body. Uh, we want to update the position, so we're going to set that to true. And as for rotation, we probably are going to set this to false because we don't want Fred to be spinning and it's going to make our, our game a lot harder to play if there's rotation involved. So as for now, we're going to set that to false. We might change it later. Um, but that's kind of how it works. Let's save everything and run it on our emulator. And as, as you can see, uh, Fred just went off of our screen because we don't have anything for him to interact with. So that's the next thing we're going to set up is a ground. And I know we are going really quickly through a lot of this stuff and it might be confusing, but trust me, just stick with the series, guys, because we're going to go over this over and over and everything's going to make sense, I promise you. So uh, just if you're completely confused, don't worry about it for now. Um, because we will be going over this stuff again. So let's go back up to our onCreateScene method here. Where is it? Here. And before we do our callback up here, we're going to say uh, we want to create some walls. So let's create that method, create walls. And you can hover over and it'll create the wall for you, um, or at least that method. And then within here, we're going to refer to our fixture, uh, fixture definition. And we're going to call this wall fix 
set this equal to again physics factory uh, dot create fixture and for our wall we want it to have a zero density a zero elasticity and a zero uh, friction and again you probably have to put F's at the end of these because it's looking for float values you just have, just have to make sure that you are giving a float value um, the next thing that we want to do is maybe create instead of a sprite maybe just a rectangle from the rectangle class and we're going to call this ground it's going to be equal to a new rectangle as you can see down here it comes from the and engine class the entity primitive uh, class which will include our rectangle that we're creating here uh, we need an x and a y value also a width and a height value and our vertex buffer which we kind of used when we created our sprite so go ahead and click that for x value we want to say like zero because that will be the very left edge of our screen for y we might want to say screen height um, and if we actually want to see our ground we can do like negative 15 pixels or something like that for our width, we want it to be the width of our screen. Uh, so again, we're going to relate to the camera width. And for our camera height, maybe we'll say 15 pixels. And that will go to the bottom of our screen as well. And lastly, for our vertex buffer, we're going to relate to this dot M engine dot uh, get vertex buffer manager, kind of like we did with our sprite. Again, I don't. I'm not sure if I explained that or not. We'll get into that later if I haven't. Um, and change that back to rectangle. So now we've created again our object or what it kind of looks like. We might want to say our ground dot set color and we can say a new color and give it pretty much whatever parameters you want. I'm just going to say like 15, 50, 0, uh, some color. Again, that's up to your design, however you want it to look. Uh, the next thing that we have to do is relate to the physics factory class. And we're going to say dot create uh, box body. And this is kind of like when we created the circle body for Fred. We're just going to say create box body. Um, for the first parameter, what physical world do we, or physics world do we want? We want the one that we defined. Uh, the next area that we're defining will be our ground area. It comes from the rectangle class. And then the body type, we're going to say body type dot static because if we said dynamic like we did with Fred our ground would fall with the scene as well and it, there would be no collisions because both objects are falling at all times so uh, we're gonna say static body for the ground and lastly for a fixture we're gonna say our wall fixture then the last thing that we have to do is relate to our scene and we're gonna say attach child again our entity which will be our ground so let's save this and run it and hopefully we get something like at the beginning of the tutorial. And again if you guys were getting problems with your emulator in the last tutorial on mybringback.com I showed you a little uh, trick. Again it might be your, your uh, graphics card in your computer that might be causing you problems but uh, this is kind of how it looks. Um, kind of how I showed you in the beginning of the tutorial we created a rectangle here that's static. It won't be affected by gravity. Uh, Fred is there and he bounces. If we go back down to the populate scene, you guys can mess around with elasticity. Like, let's change this to 0.2, maybe something like that. And again, you guys can mess around with these um, and just experiment because that's the best way to learn is if you just kind of mess around. Uh, but as you can see here, it looks like he doesn't have any elasticity. He just bounce and barely went up, then bounce again, and now he's pretty much on the ground. So again, we wanted our elasticity to be one, so he's roughly about. Uh, the same height as when he bounced and that's pretty much it guys for this tutorial I know it is pretty much monkey see monkey do but we will learn these topics more in depth in the next few tutorials within the series so please continue watching click that like button hit the subscribe button and share these videos with your friends because they'll motivate me to create more of them and more quickly all that stuff so thanks again guys for watching and we'll see you later